Hail Azathoth, fellow adventurers and planeswalkers, and welcome back to the Knights of Argos. My name is Brandon, and today we are going to be doing our fourth installment of our series Crypt and Clang, where we talk about and review different board games. As we are in the month of madness, October, our spooky time, we wanted to keep the board games in that horror and spooky Halloween genre. So today we are playing the second edition of Fantasy Flight Games' is Mansions of Madness. Now, let's move into setup and gameplay. Today we are playing the second edition of Mansions of Madness by Fantasy Flight Games. This is a game of mystery, madness, and mania that takes investigators through different scenarios in the Lovecraftian era. This fun, ever-changing game is very different as it includes an interactive app that changes the scenario and helps guide the investigators. This game for one to five players is a great way to get into the spooky, creepy Halloween season. For setup, the first thing you want to do is prepare the application. Now, this app is free to download, but there are in-app purchases that you can take advantage of, which include more scenarios that you can play once you have played through the free ones. Next, you'll want to separate all the tokens, monster info cards, inventory cards, as well as everything else that comes in the little bags. You'll also want to separate the location boards and notice that they have two sides. So when the app asks for a certain room, remember that they could be on either side of the board. There are many pieces, so making sure that they are in a nice organized style will help with game flow. The last thing you want to do is pick your scenario. After you do that in the app, it will continue the setup process by asking you to pick characters as well as giving you starting equipment. So once you do that, that will be the final thing to do for setup and you're ready to start the game. The game is very simple. The app will lead you through the story and dialogue and it is very interactive. The first step is the investigator phase where each person will have two actions and the actions include things that interact with the app as well as the game board. Once each investigator has taken their two actions, we move to the mythos phase. There, there are some interactions with the board as well as some spooky things that may happen and some attacks if there are villains on the board. The app will guide you through all of those things as well as some very interesting and descriptive dialogue. Once the mythos phase is done, it goes back to the investigator phase and this process will continue until the objective has been met. Now that we have seen all this, Let's go back to Justin and Lee and see what they think of the game. Okay, we've sat down, we've played a little bit of the game, which was actually Justin's first time playing of the game. Yay, it's kind of like a game tasting, but board games, and it was a Justin instead of... Wait. Anyway, now that we've done it, let's talk a little bit about some of the things that you really enjoyed about the game, some of the things you, you noticed. Um, Justin, you wanna go first? Yeah, um, I just really like the whole aspect of using the iPad. That was a, something very new that I haven't experienced with a board game because you, you know board games are usually tabletop. Mm -hmm. But using the iPad added a whole, I guess, dynamic, if you can say, like just more interactive, a little bit more like, okay. And I like how everybody kind of like reread each, like yeah. we read a certain text or pa a paragraph and just, it was more interactive. I think that was pretty good. I like that. Yeah, I really like. Definitely, that. this is this is a very different game with that aspect. Like same. Like I've never done both platform tabletop and virtual, so which was super super cool. And you know, obviously, it does come with some drawbacks because you know you have to make sure you have a device with you. But yeah. I mean, nowadays it's pretty easy to have either like a tablet, like we had, or it's even good on mobile. On mobile, so, yeah. So yeah, definitely we we like passing around that um, that need to read, I guess you would call it, um, because you know we all want to be part, like you said, just like integrating into the story and just getting to read and like knowing all those things is awesome for everyone to do, rather than just one person hold the iPad. And read. Yeah, yeah. But cool, cool, cool. Definitely, Lee. Anything that you really noticed about the game? I know we've played it a little bit more. Yeah, definitely. Um, Lee and I played this when we went up to. San Antonio, we went to a game store there. It was on their shelf to just sample games and we actually played it and died. I don't know yeah. if we played the first game correctly, but just getting to do it, you know, and then playing it over and over and then we were able to get it. But but anyway, things that you noticed this last time we played or things that you've accumulated every time we've played? 
So, this game, besides the iPad that it utilizes, it, it does create a that depth. And this game, of course, every time you play it, is different. Like, you can't just go back and like, oh, I know what's gonna happen. It kind of just ran, it has that randomness to it. You know, you can't expect to be playing the same scenario over and over again. There's there's always gonna be something different to it. Uh, whether it's gonna be like different characters or like uh, wherever they're gonna spawn on those like search mm -hmm. locations. Mm -hmm. So there's always something different and it mixes it up. Like you can go ahead and play this again. Yeah, you know? it's not yeah, something that's the same scenario time. over and over. Yeah, where it's just like, oh, and some boy is like, oh, you already know what's gonna happen. And you can just kind of cheat the system that way, mm -hmm. but not with yeah. this one. Yeah. And that's where I think the iPad comes in perfectly because it utilizes that. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it integrates it into the board game very, very well. I haven't necessarily played any other board games that uses the same mechanics as this. Mm -hmm. So and to me, it makes it very, very unique. And it's very enjoyable to use and it's easy. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely, yeah. Like you said, just the... There's no way to cheat it when it's on the iPad. Yeah. You know, you can't look ahead. You can't look at cards up ahead. You can't yeah. read a book. You know, it's always going to be random and it won't happen until you make those decisions. Yeah. Which ties into one of my favorite things about this game is the mystery aspect of it. Mm. Because like you said, it's going to be different. It's going to be on the iPad and just that, <laughs> I guess anxiety is fun. Yeah, yeah. You know, just yeah. to never, you're never knowing what's gonna happen. You know, something bad can happen, something great can happen, but there's always that question. Which is why I love that we're doing it this this time because yeah, it's yeah. it's tying into that horror that what's right around the corner, what's going to scare us, what's going to jump out, you know. So I love that we were able to play this and get some exposure for it. Yeah, you can prepare as much as you can for it, but the unexpected always happens with this, mm -hmm. and it's it's really fun. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Go go go! Now we've talked a little bit, kind of gather our thoughts. Mm -hmm. Let's start our review officially. Um, I will start this time. Oh, okay. So, I am definitely going to give this game a crit. It mm. is awesome, it is very different every time, and I love the integration of the Lovecraftian just dialogue, yeah. and mm. setting everything into there, and having miniatures that you know represent all of those different things from that genre is just so cool. I mm. love having, I just love playing games with that like yeah. setting, and it's so cool, especially like the the Call of Cthulhu campaign that we're doing, you know, just tying everything into that is so awesome. As well, it is a great game solo or with up to five people. You know, I, we've played it with, maybe four has been the, the biggest I've ever played with. Oh. But I played one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. And even playing solo is super cool. Oh, so I didn't even know actually that you mm -hmm. can play it yep. by yourself. Yep, like, yep, yep. Wow, oh. I need to yeah, try that. I, I need to try that. When we're born, well, yeah. have the box. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's definitely a crit, definitely recommend it. The one thing that is a little pushy or tentative about it is it is, it is a rather expensive game. Mm. You know, but for people who are really committed to playing it and will go through it many times and get the best value for it, I definitely think it's worth it. But yeah, that's crit. <laughs> I guess I'll go. Um, I'd say it's a crit too, man. It's definitely a crit because I'm very much intrigued because, like I said, it's something new that I've never experienced before, before with any board game. And the story is actually really, like, it keeps you kind of, like, giving you those crumbs that kind of want you more and more and more and more. And so, like, what's going to happen next? What's going to happen next? If I do, if I look at this clue, what's going to happen next? Exactly. So, I really like it. It got my attention. So, I'll give it definitely a crit. Cool, cool. And last but not least, um, least. I think out of the three of us, I think we all know that I'm gonna give this a crit. Uh, I am a huge, huge HP Lovecraft just fan, like, uh, like the mythos and everything. And this board game is like almost like the essential of Lovecraft. If you are a huge fan of like, just uh, like weird horror things, I mean, go for it. Um, but yeah, like one, like one of the things though that I kind of dislike about this 
is the long period of time that it requires you to play. I, I enjoy it, I, I don't mind personally, but sometimes it can get a bit like, okay, it's, it's drudging along, you know? Yeah, I so it. It, it, it can slow down a bit when we're, when, especially when there's like four or five people, I don't know the max of the people, five. five. Uh, especially where there's like five players, you're all taking your turn, you know, you're, tr you're trying to plan it out, be careful, and like just try to be like very optimized with your decisions in the game. So it can trudge yeah, along, I get you that. know? But other than that, I think this is amazing. Like, I, <laughs> I would love to own this. <laughs> So, Definitely yeah. collector's item. Well, not even collector's item. Like just a good board game to have. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, definitely. I'm I'm very glad that we have such positive reaction to it. And definitely, like like we've said, if you're interested in it, look it up. You know, we're going to have a link in the description below to some of the different places you can get it. There's expansion packs, you know, and it's related to a bunch of H.P. Lovecraft other lore and stuff. So if you look into that, it just makes the game even so much more. Um, thrilling and yeah, exciting. Definitely. Well, you guys, thank you so much for joining us for our fourth installment of Crit and Clan, where we got our hands a little bit gooky and spooky <laughs> in Fantasy Flight's Mansions of Madness. Stay on the lookout for more videos on our channel, including our second session of our Call of Cthulhu campaign. Ah. So, like and subscribe to become a Knight of Argos, and comment down below on what you want us to do for the month of madness. Well, that's it, fellow star spawns and Eldrazi. We'll see you guys next time. <laughs> <laughs>